enjoying it all. This was a really nice event, and thank you for having me. And now I know where Questlove lives. You have got to try some of Questlove's drinks. And his food. It's amazing. It's going down. And you already know what's happening. If you don't get somebody off of this right here, well, your game is in the toilet. Amazing. Amazing food. Like, amazing combinations that I would never have thought of. It's beautiful. I love it. So today we're doing the kimchi grits, and uh, we have um, you know some grits in the stove, and uh, we have homemade uh, kimchi uh, that's been fermenting for like 30 days now. A little smoked tomatoes. These are ruby red shrimp. They come out of North Carolina, so we're gonna cook those like really really gently with a little bit of smoked bacon. Just kind of like a little bit American, a lot of Korean, and on top we're gonna put a little quail egg because uh, egg is really really good with kimchi and it's really really good with grits. You get the sauce in there and it's just like really good, <laughs> really delicious. I've never had shrimp and grits with an egg yolk before and it was really inventive, I really loved it. Eggs make everything better. They always do. Makes it a little more rich. That's like a, a that's like a baby egg. traditional shrimp and grits, right? But it's not traditional. Because there's like layers, you know? I'm really happy. I'm very happy. This is how I feed my wife at home, too. It's so ironic. At the Dutch, I'm still trying to define what American food is, like six years later. And a big part of it is, I like to call American soul food, which is what your grandmother cooked, what my grandmother cooked. And so the kimchi recipe is a variation of one of our Korean American cook's grandmother's kimchi recipe. It's a little bit taking a classic American thing and mashing it up with a Korean classic. When it comes to food, the, f the first contact you have, it's a visual contact. So it tells you if you're going, going to like it or not. If it's beautiful and pretty, of course you're going to be attracted to it. I love fashion. I love clothes. I own literally hundreds and hundreds of hats, shoes, lots of jackets. The way that we played at the restaurant, some plates are with restraint, some plate, plates are definitely a lot bigger and more boisterous, so it's kind of the feeling of, sometimes I wear a loud shirt like this, sometimes I just wear, you know, a hoodie. Like, you always have a piece of you in every plate of food that you make. I'm making a confit piglet uh, with some snow crab, some uni. I made a seaweed like brown butter and a little pork broth from the pig and uh, like a sweet potato, little puree, quenelle. It'll be like for some crunch and some acid. We have like a ginger green onion kind of Chinatown kind of slaw and uh, like pickled cipollinis. I wanted to use like some Canadian products, you know? We wanted to use the Quebec piglet. We wanted to use some Newfoundland snow crab. This is a very matty dish, I feel, you know? Like something that I, I love eating and I love serving to people, so, yeah. Whoa! Nice. I had some type of broth with crab and sea urchin and uh, some seaweed. Very good for your alkaline levels. I will probably never have piglet broth again in my life, so I cherished the experience. This is kind of like out of the box in the sense that we're just, everyone's cooking something that they're comfortable with, I think, which is amazing. And I think you're really going to see the chef's favorite, these are kind of like the chef's favorite dishes maybe, you know? It's nice. I used to cook a lot with my mother and my grandmother, and they would always make couscous, and usually it was like, roasted chicken or roasted beef that we would put over couscous. So it's a dish that I kind of grew up eating and now I've just taken it and put a little bit of a, my own twist on it. I'm making uh, Moroccan short ribs with couscous, candied satsumas, and uh, black tea honey. No one really knows what Israeli food is. Even people in Israel don't really understand it. Uh, General Tsao's chicken is Chinese food, but it's American food. Fajitas are American food. And so 
in Israel, it is Israeli food. But tonight I'm cooking a I'm cooking a Moroccan dish. But that is Israeli food because they you know there's a huge Moroccan population in Israel and they cook that food all the time. So Israeli food is like Moroccan food because a lot of Moroccans settled in Israel. And also it's Greek food and it's Lebanese food and it's Persian food. It's really uh, kind of like a melting pot of a lot of different cultures that settled there, especially after World War II when Israel kind of opened up, when it became a state and opened up its borders to Jewish people from all over the world. Almost all the food that you're eating in Israel is based off of you know, groups of people sitting down to eat it together. This is a frozen s'mores. It's a, a s'mores ice cream. So on the outside you have a honey marshmallow. In the center you have a truffle, black truffle caramel ice cream coated with chocolate wafer. It's stepped on a branch that's been smoked with apple wood. And the last little touch, we're going to torch the marshmallow. It's chewy, it's cold, it's caramelized and it's toasted. It's really, really good. When it comes to creativity, a lot of different aspects can come up. I remember a few years ago being uh, sick, I had a flu during the winter, and uh, there I had to walk a different way. Since I couldn't taste anything, I started thinking of textures, and I focused on the textures more than on the taste. That's uh, really good because you have a, a mix of textures. Yeah. It's chewy, it's cold, it's crunchy on the outside. It's uh, ice cream, it's, it's really, really fun to eat. It's a marshmallow wrapped around a chocolate and, and, and ice cream. It's like an enigma wrapped in a riddle. Like <laughs> oh yeah, that's, this is such a good That's nice, smoky flavors. You're getting the, you're getting the truffle, mm -hmm. the creaminess from the marshmallow, the burnt edges. Mm -hmm. It's a complete dish. Good Dominique job. Ansel is a god. Good job, good job, top, good job, top. On top? Okay. And then what up? What up? Good, good. Okay. We'll take that out. <laughs> you scared? You seem to embrace the impossible. Try it. I already know it's a masterpiece. To me, it's very important when I create something um, to bring back uh, childhood memories or emotions. And I think it's all connected to what, what you eat now and why you remember it as well. All the time that you take to make a dish and you see someone eat it and as soon as you see them smile, I know as corny as a cliche as that sounds, that's really the biggest compliment. Like, it, like I love watching from the past and like with the, we have chef's tables at, at Parts and Labor and when you see people crushing food and like they stop talking and they're just sitting there crushing food and they're like smiling and it makes them happy. That, that is the best kind of feeling and it's like, that's worth it.